before anyone says anything, I know what I look like. You don't gotta tell me. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Heavyweights. Heavyweights is a 1995 theatrical release. It's directed by Stephen Brill, cinematography by Victor Hammer, editing by Carol Timothy Omiera. The music is by J.A.C. Redford and it's written by Judd Apatow and Stephen Brill. Stephen Brill, I covered in the video about the Mighty Ducks. The link will be in the description. Victor Hammer is best known for Big Stan, Billy Madison, Rocky Five, and Freaky Links. Carol Timothy O'Meara is best known for Hoosiers, The Last Starfighter, Conan the Barbarian, and All the President's Men. J.E.C. Redford, I covered in the video about Save the Dog. The link will be in the description. Judd Apatow is best known for Girls, Knocked Up, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, and This is 40. The film stars Aaron Schwartz, Ben Stiller, Tom McGowan, Leah Lale, Paul Feig, Sean Weiss, and Kanan Thompson, Aaron Schwartz plays Jerry, and is best known for Guardians of the Galaxy, The Mighty Ducks, and this. Ben Stiller plays Tony Perkis, and he's best known for Tropic Thunder, Zoolander 1 and 2, There's Something About Mary, the Meet the Parents franchise, the None at the Museum franchise, Secret Life of Walter Money, name it, he's in it, it's Ben Stiller. Tom McGowan plays Patrick, or Pat, as they call him in the movie, and he is best known for Ghost World, Sleepless in Seattle, After the Sunset, and True Crime. Leah Lale plays Julie, and she's best known for Little Nicky, D2, The Mighty Ducks, VIP, and this. Paul Feig plays Tim, and he's best known for Freaks and Geeks, The Heat, Spy, and Ghostbusters. Sean Weiss plays Josh, and I covered him in The Mighty Ducks. Keenan Thompson plays Roy, and I covered him in D2, The Mighty Ducks. The links will be in the description. They filmed at Camp Pinnacle in North Carolina for two months. It's got a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes. It got really negative reviews. It made like 17.6 million dollars at the box office. However, when the DVD released and just over time, it has garnered a cult following. And when the DVD was released, it received a little bit more positive reviews saying Judd Apatow's humor is like the gold standard around here now, considering, you know, the 40 year old virgin is knocked up in all of those movies were mega hits in the comedy genre that heavyweights kind of like hits better in the comedy zone now because Judd Apatow's humor is just so iconic at this point. This is the first movie of 1995. We are officially at the halfway point of the 90s. I cannot believe it. 90s year wise. I don't think we're at the halfway point of 90s movies wise. I think they start to really pump out some movies here soon. But I'm so excited. This film, I have, the what I'm about to say is actually my last note, but I just, I have to say it right off the bat just to give you guys an idea. If you've never seen Heavyweights, Heavyweights is about a fat camp, basically. And it's normally like a really fun, teach you to be healthy, but still have an amazing time at camp, fat camp. And this main kid, Jerry, is going for the first time and he's really nervous and he's mad at his parents for sending him. And when they get there, they find out that the longtime owners went bankrupt and had to sell it. And the person who bought it is an evil, evil man who wants to basically abuse the kids into losing weight. And insanity ensues in the best Judd Apatow co comedy way. And when I finish this film, I have to say it is the most 90s film, I think, yet that we have watched it is just the wardrobes are so 90s especially ben stiller's character tony perkis wears an outfit in the very beginning that's all white suit but the belt is this white leather that was all interwoven and if none of your parents or anybody who's watching this if you didn't own a belt like that like depending on your age when if you were from like your 20s to, you know, elderly in the 90s, you probably owned a belt like this. <laughs> and it just brought me so many <laughs> flashbacks to the 90s in general. My mom owned brown belts like that. And so in wardrobe and style and just everything in the so 90s, but also just in the like, the kid ensemble film is at its peak in this. The, the comedy is 90s. The only having one woman in the movie is 90s. The cultural appropriation is 90s. But then the comedy is 90s and like some of the heart is 90s. So like it's got some of the best and some of the worst of 90s movies in it. So it's just like the most 90s film ever. I was a little nervous because I had never seen this movie and I thought the movie was just gonna be making fun of fat people the whole time. But that's really not the case. The whole idea of the film kind of at least what I took away from it is that you can't being mean to people who are overweight isn't going to do anything for them 
the kids gain weight while Tony Perkis is in charge because he's so drastic and mean and radical. And then when Pat, who's been there forever, gets in charge, they start teaching the kids nicely and letting them have fun about like the importance of nutrition and like they learn that way and start to lose weight. So I really enjoyed that that was kind of a bigger message in the film that Tony Burgess was like the villain for being so nasty to these kids and wanting them to lose weight this way and a very like mean and unhealthy way to go about it by like starving them and making them walk like 50 miles when they're kids, they're like 12. It was intense. The film is funny. It's got some genuinely funny moments. Ben Stiller is amazing. It's Ben Stiller. And then it's just like old home week. I feel like Paul Feig, Ben Stiller, the guy who's the cameraman, all of these guys are in each other's movies or work on each other's movies or all know people. Like the camera guy is in a bunch of Adam Sandler movies. Paul Feig goes on to direct a bunch of comedy movies with like the Judd Apatow group. And then Ben Stiller obviously goes on to do like a million and five comedies that are so amazing and they all work with their buddies. Like it's just, it was like the beginning of the buddy week. I don't even know, but it, it was really funny. The kids were great. I thought the kids really shined in this film. Paul Feig was so young. I was not, I'm not used to seeing him that young. I'm used to seeing him super well dressed in a suit and talking about a movie he directed. So to see him in a movie wearing a bunch of crop tops was awesome. <laughs> uh, ben Stiller, again, was such a great villain. He also plays his dad, like Tony Perkis's dad is also played by Ben Stiller in old makeup, which I thought was fun. But overall, I enjoyed the movie. I did think it was fun. I don't think it was incredible. Like, I don't think it was like the most amazing, funny 90s movie I've ever seen. It had some issues, like the Apache stuff was a little bit yikes and only having one woman in the movie. I mean, there were girls at the dance, but like out of all the main characters, there was one woman, which was, you know, classic 90s. So it's got some pros and it's got some cons. But overall, it was a fun mid-90s kids teaming up against a unified villain shenanigans. It was fun. That's actually everything I have for heavyweights. I enjoyed the film. I'm glad it wasn't totally mean to fat people. <laughs> and I'm glad it kind of had a decent message, actually, but still had a really fun time doing it. Uh, my final rating is six. Walkmans <laughs> out of 10 because that entire scene is so funny. <laughs> uh, our total movie count is. Parents at Salt and Cry Count are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join my Patreon. Seriously. For real. It's a good time over there. And I want more of you over there so we can have more conversations. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I don't know if you are, so you do, and don't be Tony Perkis about it. <laughs> Hi, there was actually an after credit scene for this movie as well. I'm wondering if there's gonna be a string of them. This is very interesting. The after credit scene for this movie was Tony Perkis at a door selling crystals. <laughs> and I think he said, uh, oh, I didn't write it down, but he, <laughs> He was selling crystals and he was like, I like to call them whatever. And then the door slammed on him. Also the credit song was like a heavyweight song and it, by all the kids and Pat and Paul Feig and all of them. And it was very fun. Bye. <laughs>